The GOP assault on CNBC continues, and uh, not just on CNBC, on the idea that at a debate there should be critical analysis of the policies that the candidates have. They don't like that anymore, and so both the RNC and the candidates themselves are gathering, trying to figure out how they can control the debates going forward. Now first we have Reince Priebus, who is, uh, against all odds, still the leader of the RNC, and they are now cutting their ties with NBC News going forward for the debates. We've got a couple of clips of Reince Priebus. Uh, let's start. With this. I said in 2008, the media is dead in America, journalism's dead, and I'd argue it's now buried as of what happened last night in Boulder, Colorado. I would assume you're pretty ticked off. Uh, I just can't tell you how pissed off I am, but um, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, when you take a deep breath and you take a step back and you say, okay, this is clearly a victory for these candidates on the stage because what they did was extraordinary. And I thought every one of them, I mean, I, uh, Ted Cruz's line, you know, we, we're calling that the Cruz missile, but all the rest of them, too, <laughs> did such a good job. In the face of just, it, it was insanity. I mean, it, uh, just sitting there seething through this thing. I mean, other than, you know, thinking about hitting the circuit breaker in the auditorium that crossed my mind. So unfortunately, uh, coming out of that, we are going to have to change the name of cruise missiles because they're no longer going to scare anyone, <laughs> uh, which is sad. Uh, so as I said, they are cutting their ties with NBC News, which does mean that in February, a planned debate will not happen. They will have a debate, but it won't be uh, co-sponsored by uh, NBC there. Uh, they sent a letter to uh, NBC saying, the CNBC network is one of your media properties, and its handling of the debate was conducted in bad faith. We understand that NBC does not exercise full editorial control over CNBC's journalistic approach. However, the network is an arm of your organization, an arm, like it's the military, and we need to ensure that there is not a repeat performance. Of what? Of what? Of, what of exactly that. This is the bad thing. While debates are meant to include tough questions and contrast candidates' visions and policies for the future of America, CNBC's moderators engaged in a series of gotcha questions. <laughs> Petty and mean-spirited in tone and designed to embarrass our candidates. You can't be president if you can't handle gotcha questions. That's you just can't. Yeah, but, but, and, but to be fair, they didn't need any help embarrassing themselves. <laughs> the moderators could have just let them talk, I guess. Uh, but yes, so gotcha what, questions. Now, this is not just a Sarah Palin thing. This is the head of the RNC using that term. So this is, again, going to backfire on them because what they're going to end up with is a debate moderated by Sean Hannity and uh, Rush Limbaugh and... They're going to get their ass handed to them from the right, right? Which is mm -hmm. going to be great to see because then it's going to actually explode. If you think they're crazy now, <laughs> wait till you have three of those crazies interviewing them, asking them, why aren't you crazier? And then yeah. they just go crazy, crazy. <laughs> this is going to be the worst thing. So this, he's so stupid because the CNBC <laughs> was such a softball. They're such softball debate. The one woman actually apologized to Donald Trump after she was right. So, uh, quick. Yeah, she was. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Then what? The, Talking so she, about the the Rubio uh, immigration policy. Yes. Yeah. So the, this is going to back. So I. This is hilarious. I think the American people know this is hilarious. They, CNBC could not be more in the tank for corporations and the Republican Party. It's just hilarious, and this will backfire on them. And you know the old the, what they love to say about Barack Obama is, hey, how's he going to stand up to Putin? You got to be able to stand up to Putin. How are you going to stand up to Putin? How are you going to stand up to Putin if you can't stand up to frickin' seeing Jim Cramer? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, yeah, and there's also another angle. Now, I'm not going to say that this is a reason why they're canceling that debate, but it, but it is interesting. The February Forum, this is the one that's being canceled now, was the only Republican primary debate set to be co-hosted by a Hispanic news organization, yeah. with National Review as the conservative media mm. partner. Priebus said a debate will still occur on that date, and National Review will still be a part of it, but he did not say whether another Spanish-language media organization will be involved. It's mm. so funny you mentioned that. I saw that as well, and I wondered whether that went back to mm. Trump really trying to call the shots and really having... Yeah. Maybe Trump wouldn't go. And he wouldn't go. Well, they've already... Trump's already indicated that him and Carson would arguably sit out the next, the next round. I mean, as though it is some kind of reality TV yes. competition. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, we've talked about this before, and I don't want to kind of end up repeating myself, but I just don't know, and I'd be interested to know your respective thoughts. At what point are those two, those two outsiders, those two <laughs> going to actually implode? Yeah. At what point? They haven't already? Mm -hmm. 
This isn't implosion. This isn't no. just a no, big they're still, hilarious. They're still Carson's Carson's winning Carson's in the latest poll. And, and in Iowa, he's winning but in Iowa. I and want nationally. Them to. And nationally now. Yes. Thank you. He had a he had a two point a two a two digit lead on Trump earlier in the week in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And now, as you said, he's winning. But isn't that good? Isn't it good that the most severe, the most extreme, actually win the primary? Because then it's much better chance for Hillary or for Bernie, whoever ends up winning our primary. Like, isn't that what you want to see? Yeah. If it's if it's Trump or Ben Carson, it's uh, easy. I got. Well, the, I won that Ben. Bet with Jenk then. <laughs> yeah, then we'll actually have a landslide too. Like yeah. we're usually in the actual uh, election, we're usually only five percentage points or less apart between mm -hmm. the Republicans and the Democrats. You know, it's always a tight race. Mm -hmm. I think that if we had Trump versus Hillary, it would be a landslide. I, I do. I also agree with you on that because he's completely lost even the Republican Hispanics, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. even the people who are Hispanic who consider themselves Republicans just, just this week said, we're not going to vote for you guys. We're not going to show up if you guys don't stop doing this. Yeah. And let me tell you something. They're not going to stop doing this. And also, wait. The debate won't help. It's how did it take this long right. for yeah, his Hispanic? Yeah. yeah, how did it take this long? Yeah, that's good to show you what kind of bootlickers they are. But I, I, I really think it was it would be better for the primaries, if they did do it that way, if they did have Fox News and the right-wing media host all the Republican debates, and if they had Keith Olbermann and Rachel Maddow and uh, me <laughs> uh, or Jenk or somebody yeah. like that host uh, their Democratic debates, that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking. Democrats should be talking to Democrats. And then when we come to the general, then we worry about mixing up the de the press the panel. But until mm -hmm. then, I think we have, I think it should be that way. And I, I wish it would go back to that. Hmm. But I, I think the problem here is that even, uh, even if what you say makes sense, they're not getting pissed because, you know, Democrats are talking to them at these debates. They're getting pissed because CNBC and Fox <laughs> News were too mean. Yeah, they were upset. <laughs> Megyn Kelly was mean so to this, Trump I think by is... quoting him. I, she <laughs> quoted him and he started crying and he didn't stop for weeks. <laughs> See, but no one, why doesn't anyone bring that, like I haven't seen anyone, I've watched a lot of the coverage, I haven't seen any of the news people bring that up to Reince Priebus or anybody else. Like, well, you guys are upset at Fox News too. Do, I mean, Donald Trump's got into a big feud with them. I mean, you guys just don't like news. Yeah, there's right? nobody just, left at this point to yeah. interview them. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to Nixon. I mean, but in terms of like that phobia, that Republican phobia, in particular, mm. the Republican phobia of main, what they call mainstream media uh, or the left media wing, in yeah. general. And yeah. it's that left leaning. And, and Nixon famously, when he lost the, the gubernatorial race in California in 62, said, oh, I guess you'll have to go after somebody else now. Yeah. And it was, he really felt it was yes. a personal vindication. Yeah. And I think the history of that and the history of that, the, the, their relationship with the media goes back as far as that. Um, so I do think they feel as though they're hounded, and you're right. It's it's ludicrous. I mean, listen. In terms of silly questions, I listen. I have to say, I have to say, I don't think that the way that CNBC people handled themselves, they didn't handle themselves with any particular decorum, and they weren't particular. They had an opportunity to rise above things, and mm -hmm. I think they try to get down and dirty with Trump. It's not difficult to get a rise out of him. I think you could do it in a much more mm -hmm. artful manner. But that's me personal. That's personal taste. But. To, to, to say that they were the only ones getting the tough questions, the first question that Hillary Clinton was asked is, will you say anything to be president? Yes. That's a pretty yeah. nasty question. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty lowball, tough question and to go in. Remember at. Bernie Sanders? Socialism scares the hell out of people. Yeah. Why would people vote for and, you when you say, say you're a socialist? And they, yeah, and they quoted the fact that they will vote. you'd vote for an atheist and a, uh, someone, a, a, someone who's Jewish and someone else and someone, and then da way down on the totem pole mm -hmm. is a socialist. How do you feel about that? Yeah. So there's some fairly direct, blunt, oh, unpleasant questions coming in. So it's not. So this again is just <laughs> the Republicans <laughs> playing the refs. That's all this is. They're trying to play the refs. It's but a now they're overreaching <laughs> like they always do overreach. Just with Benghazi, and they can't help themselves. <laughs> they knew it would lower their their ratings when they uh, impeached Bill Clinton. They did it anyway. Yeah. They knew this last Benghazi hearing was going to totally <laughs> f them and help her, and they did it anyway. Yeah. They can't help themselves. They're such a prisoner to their base, and now you have guys like Jeb Bush and John Kasich taking themselves out of the race by yeah. attacking their base. Yeah, yeah. and right. the I think you're, you're totally right that they Me? And Trump. You were too, sure. Damn. Uh, but no, when he was saying that when you compare it to the Democratic debate, and look, I, I thought that those questions sort of came out of the blue in comparison to the debates that had come before them, but I'm glad that they asked those questions because not only do the voters need to know the Democrats' responses to those hard questions, but the vote that they, we need to know that they can answer them, that they're prepared to take that sort of criticism. Right. But on the right, I, like tr Ted Cruz was the one who really launched the criticism of the media during the debate. And when you go back and look at all of the things that he pointed out that they were doing wrong, like, the, oh, you say that, that Trump is a comic book villain of a campaign. No, what they actually said was, you said you're going to deport 10 million people. You're going to build this wall and make the Mexican government pay for it. <laughs> they, were, they were specifically referencing policy positions that he had staked out. 
They did the same when they were criticizing the biblical flat tax of Ben Carson. They were asked <laughs> substantive questions. You may not have liked the tone perfectly, but you were asked to defend things that you had said, and they were completely unable and unwilling to do it. It was an embarrassment. They are embarrassed, and that's why they're responding the way they are afterwards. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree with you. I think they weren't prepared to get in the su into the substance of some of their highly questionable tax tax because this was yeah. supposed to be the one that we go to economic policy, and let's really talk about that. And I think they were unprepared because they either haven't thought it through or it's unpalatable. I mean, this flat tax yeah. system that all of the most, by the most, the majority seem to be advocating this 15% seems to be the number, right? And it, they, no one can really explain how that impacts on the poorer or the lower mm -hmm. to middle middle classes. Well, people can. They can't explain. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, how, and, how, and answering well, how, how that's yeah. going to work in terms of can. paying disproportionately, they will end up paying for more mm -hmm. stuff, as yeah. the Republicans mm -hmm. would say. And so they pivot. And they pivot very cle cleverly and they pivot very artfully to we're being attacked. Yeah. And then they make it about the incompetence of the interviewers. I don't think, the, as I said, I don't think the interviewers helped themselves because I think they were they were pretty weak. Yes, they were shitty in different ways, not in the ways that the Correct. Republican Party I is complaining yeah. about. They're definitely fell down on the job, and they have all those. And by the way, people are pointing this out that CNBC is being was credited for starting the Tea Party, right? It was that Rick Santelli. Rick Santelli. Mm, they yeah. said his rant on the floor of the Chicago Stock Exchange or or the commodity, whatever the hell that place is in Chicago, that they... Uh, it's a sizzlers. Yeah, it's a sizzler. <laughs> <And> commodities, <laughs> commodities, commodities exchange. Commodities exchange, right? So that was the thing that started, that kicked off the Tea Party. That, and they're still complaining. So no press at all is good enough. And you know what's funny is they didn't answer questions when they didn't feed. They just ignored the questions anyway. Right. So why do they give a shit?